Hi everyone, Harry Frank here from Red Giant. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you Progresso from Universe 3.1. Here in Adobe Premiere Pro, to use Progresso, I'll need a clip to apply it to, so I'll use a black video clip. And I can either go to my effects under RG Universe Motion Graphics and locate Progresso right there, or I can go to the RG Universe dashboard, which if you can't see that, simply go to Window Extensions. RG Universe dashboard. Under the motion graphics section, I can simply click apply effect or double click this to apply it to my video clip. Progresso tries to do one thing and one thing well. It renders progress bars. Most of the time, you're really just going to be animating one parameter, which is animating the progress. So if I set this to animate by clicking on the stopwatch and set a value of zero, go forward in time and I set another value such as 100, this will animate from zero to 100%. Now we have a lot of flexibility in terms of the text, the chart type, the colors, and more. So let's go into how to customize your progress bars. You'll notice at the top, we've got several different chart types to choose from. This first one, the default, is called a linear bar. If I set this to an arc, we can see that it maintains the animation, but changes out the chart type. And this is true for all the different chart types. If I change this to a pie chart or what we call a linear sequence, which builds the chart in chunks, these all animate even though I change out the chart type. Also consistent with all of the chart types is the color that is used. You'll notice if I twirl open this color section, we've got all these color parameters here that are assigned to different components of the chart. So if I change this background fill color to something like a purple, we'll see that the background fill color changes there. And if I change this to an R, we'll see that the background color is also that dark purple there. There's a few different color maps stored in either a pop-up menu like that, or you can click on choose a color map and choose one of these color maps visually. Now I'd like to jump down into the individual sections. So if we're working with a linear bar type, Right here, we can change the overall width and height of the bar chart, its rounding, as well as the stroke widths. So we have a foreground inner stroke here, and then we have this outer stroke out here. We also have opacity controls for that foreground and background fill opacity. Now, if I change my chart type at this point and I jump to the arc, We'll have to jump to the arc section here to change things like the overall bar width, stroke width, etc. You'll also find a bunch of these stored as presets in the dashboard. If I go to the Progresso section, single click on it, and double click on any of these presets here. Just like changing the chart type, the presets are also stored without the progress parameter in there. What that means is that as I double click and change these, and if I've already animated my progress type, I can freely switch between preset types without having to change my progress animation. Next, I'd like to talk about the text settings. Depending on the chart type that you want, you perhaps don't even want any text at all, and you would just visually like to represent your progress. However, if you are rendering text, you have a lot of different options. Perhaps you want to take the text and offset it, move it down below the chart, maybe change its color, change its overall size, and change its font. To do this, I can click on text style and select a different font up here. In fact, if I start typing, I can auto-complete my typeface like that. I can have the text follow the progress. Let me scooch this over just a little bit so we can see that. There's a checkbox here that says text follows progress. Now, because I've used this Y offset, it's actually kind of overlapping the bar. So I'll set that to zero and that will pop right up to the top there. In fact, looks like I need to fine tune that just a little bit. So this now goes from zero to 100% with the text progress following along. We don't have to use percentage. Let's say we're using this to illustrate temperature. In my numbers section here, I have a final value. So let's say I set this final value to 212. Instead of using a unit of measure of percent, 
I'll switch this to degrees Fahrenheit. So now this animates from 0 degrees all the way up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But if I switch this over to degrees Celsius, I can set this final value to 100. We also have things like dollars and cents. And you'll notice that the placement is fairly automatic. So if I set this to degrees, it goes afterwards. Or if I set this to dollars, it goes in front. The unit placement right here is called a smart placement. You can also force it to be before or after if you want to do so. If I set this value to be a really high value, I can also do things like add commas or even swap out the commas and periods. Now I mentioned we don't have to use numbers. I can go up to our number style and set this to a time readout. So if I go into the time section here, we can use a couple different time formats. And to customize how fast the clock is actually moving, you can change the rate here. If there's a specific time I'm going for, I've also got hours, minutes, and seconds offset there. There's also a nice little marker right underneath there, and that's also customizable. The default marker of the pointer is a procedurally drawn shape that has its own width, height, as well as pointer height. As we switch chart types, you'll notice that we try to maintain consistency as best as possible. So if I say the text follows the marker, in this case, the text is going to follow along this radial path. But looks like we need to offset it a little bit and probably change this marker. So I'll go back in here. Let's make this marker a little bit smaller. I can offset the marker in its y axis, which is essentially outward in this case. But for the text, I'll want to reset this y offset, but perhaps adjust this radius offset just a little bit to give a little bit of room for clearance. One thing that you can do that sometimes looks cool and sometimes doesn't is actually have the text automatically rotate. Depending on what you're doing, it can look kind of cool and sometimes not. So that is a basic overview of how Progresso works. It's a pretty straightforward plugin and it should do just about anything you would ever want a progress bar to do. My name's Harry Frank for Red Giant. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.